When we photograph comets, WBPP aligns the stars in the images, so the head of the comet shifts position over the course of the sequence. To integrate images like this, we need to align to the nucleus of the comet. We can do this using the Comet Alignment tool, which is in the Image Registration category. We run Comet Alignment after we've pre-processed the images with WBPP. To align the comet, we're going to use images from the Registered Images folder. Common alignment uses the time each image was taken to calculate the hypothetical position of the comet. The stars are aligned, so the comet should take a simple linear path. To define the comet's path, we need to tell comet alignment what the position of the comet is at the beginning and end of the image series. So, we double-click on the first image on the list to open it, stretch it with STF, and click on the nucleus of the comet. Comet alignment automatically calculates the centroid. Now we open the last image and repeat the same steps. Comet alignment now has the first and last images as position references. In the table, we can see the X and Y coordinates of the comet in the first image and in the last image. This is the time increment. Comet alignment uses these values to calculate the coordinate increments using linear interpolation between the first image and the last. Comet alignment can also automatically detect the centroid in each image. We can enable this option by checking this checkbox. It's important to enable it because it means that comet alignment will use the hypothetical positions to detect the real centroid of the comet. We can therefore be sure that the comet alignment will be correct in each image. If we enable this option here, comet alignment will also generate an image showing the path of the comet based on the series of frames. We can also select intermediate reference images. This is useful if we want to align the comet in images where the stars are not aligned. We'll look at this in more detail in the second part of this video. If we want to add an intermediate reference, all we have to do is open the image, stretch it, and although we can see that comet alignment has calculated the hypothetical comet position, we can click on the nucleus so that it calculates the centroid. Now we have three reference points where we know the exact position of the comet. Let's execute the process. As you can see, Comet Alignment has generated an image showing the path of the comet based on all the images. Remember, these positions are not just calculated based on the time reference, but also using the adjusted centroid position in each image. If we don't select a specific output directory, the images aligned to the comet are saved in the same folder as the original images. If we integrate them, we get an image where the stars appear to be moving, but the comet is very sharp. In the high rejection map, we can see the remains of the stars, and here we have the integrated image. Let's compare the initial sequence of images with the sequence aligned to the comet. In the original images, the comet was moving, but in the sequence processed with comet alignment, the comet is stationary and the stars are the ones that are moving. In some cases, the comet moves so quickly that the star field changes completely over the course of the sequence. In these cases, star alignment may not work, so you may want to use comet alignment directly on the unaligned comet images. 
In this sequence, the telescope has been following the head of the comet. However, it has done so without an autoguider, instead simply applying a differential speed to the right ascension and declination axes. As you can see, the comet stays in the same position, but there is a slight movement because of the lack of autoguider. Let's look at how to configure comet alignment to align this comet. First, we add the whole sequence. We're aligning blind because we're assuming that the comet will follow a reasonable non-random path. We open the first image in the list and click on the head of the comet. And now we do the same with the last image. At the moment, we don't know what path the comet will take in these images because the stars aren't aligned. If they were, the comet would follow a straight line. In this case, it would be a very long line, but it would always be straight. However, because we're relying on the telescope's drift, the comet's path may not be linear. Let's select a few intermediate images to ensure that the tool doesn't lose the comet's path. We've got 120 images, so let's select five reference images, one at the beginning, one at the end, and three in the middle. Let's open image 55. Comet alignment shows what the comet's position would be if its path were linear. But as you can see, the comet has shifted as the telescope's drift is not linear. To guide the tool, we can click on the nucleus of the comet. This allows it to detect the new position of the nucleus and update the comet's path. Let's do the same with image 85. As you can see, it's a bit closer this time because the tool is refining the path over time. We set the position of the nucleus again. And now we open image number 115 and do the same again. These intermediate images guide the tool so it can calculate the path of the nucleus accurately. Remember, we've enabled this option so that the tool locates the head of the comet and doesn't just base the alignment on the time the image was taken. We're going to enable this option too so that it generates an image with a comet's path over the course of the series. Once we've executed the process, we can see that the path isn't linear because the telescope wasn't using the autoguider. If we open the images aligned to the comet in blink, we can see that the nucleus stays in the same position in all of the images. We can see this more easily if we make the picture a little darker on the screen. Comet alignment follows the comet perfectly. If we integrate the images, the high rejection map shows all the stars with linear paths. We can also see some hot pixels which follow the opposite path to the comet. And here's the integrated image of the frames aligned to the comet. Mm -hmm.